Hello, it's Saturday and the government today made it clear that no company from any neighboring country, any country that has shares a land border with India, will be allowed to buy a strategic stake in any Indian company without specific permission from the government. Uh, reference obviously being to China and many people's concerns that it's possible that Chinese companies could take advantage of COVID-19 and acquire good Indian companies. A similar suggestion had been made, by the way, by the Congress party and by Rahul Gandhi a few days back, which is why the Congress party immediately came out today, thanked the government for listening to it and said, may this be the first in a series of steps where the government and the opposition will cooperate. Well, those are, of course, good sentiments. The government may well say we were thinking of doing it anyway. But hey, any signals or signs of cooperation are always good. Right, now let's go on to assessing how coronavirus itself is spreading. And it's been another fairly flat day with the health warning, of course, that it could turn around any day. 900 cases. It's not, the rate of increase of cases is not shooting up in any major manner. If we take a look at this Financial Times chart, for example, it's clear that for the moment, India seems to be following the trajectory of success stories like Austria, Australia or Norway, uh, which are considered good success stories and how they have dealt with COVID in terms of a flattening of the curve. If you take a look at individual states, it's clear that some states like uh, Kerala, of course, or Haryana have pretty much cracked the battle against COVID. Some states, though, are still in a worrying zone and in particular, I'd like to draw your attention to Madhya Pradesh and to Gujarat, both of which are now showing a doubling in about five to six days, anywhere between four to six days, and that is potentially a worrying zone to be in. So, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, you need to flatten your curve and the rest of the states in India, you're going to make sure that the curve remains to go in the trajectory that it seems to be going in. All right, here's a look at all the major headlines. To curb opportunistic or hostile takeovers of Indian companies due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, the government on Saturday amended the Foreign Direct Investment Policy 2017. According to the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade Notice, an entity of a country which shares a land border with India can invest only after receiving government approval. This comes after People's Bank of China increased its shareholding in HDFC. Earlier opposition leader Rahul Gandhi had asked the Modi government to protect the interest of Indian companies as big foreign firms will use the current economic situation to buy them out. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has urged states to set up renewable energy equipment manufacturing parks to meet domestic demand as well as make India a global production hub. The ministry has offered many incentives to states to set up such parks at a time when numerous international firms are looking to move their production base out of China after the COVID-19 outbreak. Tutikorin Port Trust and the governments of Madhya Pradesh and Orissa have already expressed interest in setting up re-equipment and manufacturing parks, the ministry said in a statement. The Congress on Saturday highlighted the plight of retail traders accusing the government of doing injustice to them by allowing only e-commerce companies to sell non-essential items during the lockdown. Demanding a level playing field, Congress leader Ajay Markan said, as per the sixth economic census, retail trade is the most dominant economic activity outside agriculture and factors more than 35.41% of total economic activities outside agriculture, which is the largest. The government allowed e-commerce to sell some electronic and stationary items from April 20th in a bid to help employees involved in different departments like logistics. The Shiv Sena on Saturday heaped praises on Rahul Gandhi over his stand on the coronavirus pandemic, saying the Congress leader has shown how a responsible opposition party should behave during a crisis. The Sena, which is in alliance with the Congress and NCP in Maharashtra, also lauded Rahul Gandhi for his call for a united fight against the virus and for his remarks that he might disagree with the Prime Minister on several issues, but this is not the time to fight or indulge in tutu meme. 
21 sailors of the Indian Navy posted in Mumbai have been tested positive for coronavirus. This is the first set of COVID-19 cases being reported in the Navy. The sailors were staying in the residential accommodation facilities of INS Angre. A statement from the Navy said that most of these cases are asymptomatic and have been traced to a single sailor who was tested positive on 7th of November. The entire in-living block has been put under quarantine, containment zone and INS Angre under lockdown. No cases of infection have been reported on board ships and submarines, the Navy added. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres salutes countries like India that are helping others in the global fight against COVID-19 pandemic. His spokesperson has said the praise comes days after India sent supplies of the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine to several nations, including the United States. The drug has been identified by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as a possible treatment for the COVID-19, and it is being tested on more than 1,500 coronavirus patients in New York. The demand for the drug has swelled rapidly in the last few days after India decided to lift a ban on its export. The number of the coronavirus cases in the United States crossed 7 lakh on Friday, while over 35,000 people have died from the disease. New York, the financial capital of the world, has emerged as the epicenter of the pandemic. More than 14,000 people have died in the city and over 200,000 have tested positive so far. Neighboring New Jersey has more than 78,000 cases and 3,800 deaths. Africa now has more than 1,000 deaths from COVID-19, the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said on Saturday, while Nigeria said the President's Chief of Staff had died. A total of 52 of the continent's 54 countries have reported the coronavirus, with the overall number of cases more than 19,800. Nigeria's government said Abakiari, Chief of Staff to President Buhari, died on Friday of COVID-19. Several government ministers said a U.S. ambassador was also infected with the virus earlier in Burkina Faso. The World Health Organization on Friday noted a 51% increase in cases in Africa and a 60% jump in deaths in the past week. In a bid to find solutions that can address shortage of critical medical equipment like ventilators and tackling the COVID-19 crisis, NASA has joined forces with the task force in California to build medical devices to help patients infected with the disease. The U.S. Space Agency on Friday said its many research centers will come up with innovative ideas to meet shortage of medical equipment that could arise in the future. One of their first efforts was to build a prototype oxygen hood that has now proven to work for the doctors in the hospitals, NASA said. 